So acid base and the pH scale are all uh, about describing the concentration of hydrogen ions in water. And we draw that like this, the concentration. So the, the square brackets is a sign uh, indicating that you, what's inside of it is a concentration. And a hydrogen ion is a hydrogen atom that's lost its electron. And so actually a hydrogen ion is the same thing as a proton because all that's left is a proton. So that's the, that is the concentration of hydrogen ions. And I use that square bracketed nomenclature a lot in class because concentration is a very long word to write. Okay, so it turns out that the concentration of hydrogen ions is a really important property of solutions and for, re for reasons that we'll, we'll be getting into quite a bit in the next week. Um, and, and the properties of solutions are really important for biology because remember, about 75% of a cell is actually water. So all of life, basically, all of the processes that are going on in cells are taking place in solutions. So as we're studying life, we really have to keep in mind all the time that, that everything is taking place in solution. And there are always hydrogen ions in solution. And the reason for that is that water has a very slight tendency. Water has a slight, and I'll be telling you how slight in a moment, tendency to dissociate. Which is a fancy word, uh, meaning that it breaks apart. So this is what that looks like. So H2O goes to a hydrogen ion that's positively charged and a hydroxide ion that's negatively charged. And this is a reversible reaction. And it's, um, and it's, it's a, when I say slight, about, uh, let's see, two, two, um, <laughs> two ten millionths of a percent of hydrogen, uh, excuse me, two ten millionths of a percent of water atoms at any time in, a, in, a, in pure water um, are in that dissociated form. So it, it really, it isn't a lot, but it's enough so that there's always hydrogen ions present. So the concentration of hydrogen ions in pure water is 0 0.0000001. And another way to express that is that it's 10 to the minus seven molar, this should be molar two, and to remind you, the big M means molar, and that means moles per liter, so it's a unit of concentration. So this is, this is what the concentration of hyd hydrogen ions looks like in pure water. So this concentration of hydrogen ions is so important to us that uh, we've actually invented a scale specific to it. And part of the reason for that scale is because we get tired of saying all those zeros when we're referring to, con when we're referring to, to um, concentrations of hydrogen ions. And so um, for about 110 years ago, the pH scale was invented. pH, it's little p, big H, and it stands for power of hydrogen. So the pH scale. And pH is equal to the negative log base 10 of the concentration of hydrogen ions. Now, it may have been a while since you've done logs if you're coming back to school after a few years. And so remember that the log is the inverse of the exponential function. So another way to write this, and the way that I much prefer to think about it, is that the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to 10 to the negative pH. So. The concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to 10 to the negative pH. pH is equal to the, ne the negative log of the um, hydrogen ion concentration. So if you take a look up here, I told you that the concentration of hydrogen ions in pure water was 10 to the minus 7. So that means that pure water, pure H2O, has a pH of 7. So I've actually drawn a handy little pH scale over here so we can put it on there, pure water is right smack in the middle of the pH scale. So the pH scale goes from 1 to 14. And note that um, with, the P, with the pH scale, each one of these units, say from 1 to 2 or 2 to 3, 
is a difference of an exponent to the base 10. So basically, so this a one has tenfold more hydrogen ions. A, a solution with a pH of one has tenfold more hydrogen ions than a solution with a pH of two. It has a hundredfold more than a solution with a pH of three. So when you start moving along that scale, um, this quantity, the concentration of hydrogen ions, is changing by a lot. And so there's a lot of different kinds of solutions that can be encompassed in, in that scale. The other thing to remember about the pH scale that's kind of tricky is that it's negative. So as the concentration of hydrogen ions goes up, it means the pH goes down. And that's just something that you have to remember. Okay, so let's introduce um, acids and bases. So an acid is any substance that increases, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna draw increases with a little arrow pointing up because that's an awfully long word to write, that increases the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. Okay, and remember that when the hydrogen ion concentration is increasing, that means that the pH is going down. Okay, a base is any substance that decreases the hydrogen ion concentration, and so a base causes the pH to go up. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you think about what uh, a molecule of an acid might look like, it's something that's going to shed protons into solution. It's going to tend to lose those hydrogen ions when it's in water. Um, a base is a molecule that's going to tend, because of its structure, to be able to pick those protons up. Um, another common characteristic of bases is a lot of times bases are um, compounds that will lose a uh, hydroxide ion into solution. And as those hydroxide ions build up, they combine with three free hydrogen ions to form water. So that's another way that bases can tend to decrease the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. So let's talk about a few um, uh, uh, substances that you may be familiar with and their pHs. So on the most acidic end of the scale down here at a pH 1, we have stomach acid, which is pretty, it's pretty awesome bit of physiology how our stomachs produce uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid bubbling away in there right now. Um, and we'll be talking about that at the end of the semester. So 2 is um, the pH of lemon juice. Let's see, 3 is vinegar. Also, Coca-Cola, sodas are about pH 3. Beer is a little is acidic. Uh, let's see, I forget where wine is. I think wine is somewhere in here. Coffee? Where would we be without coffee at 5? Urine? <laughs> right there between pure water and coffee. Uh, so human blood is just a tiny bit more basic than pure water. Let's see, seawater, a little bit over eight. Uh, baking soda is right there. Um, and then we have milk of magnesia, which is an old fashioned substance people would take to magnesia to soothe an upset stomach, so it neutralizes stomach acid when stomach acid gets a little out of control. And then way up here we've got bleach and oven cleaner. So, I mean, these are all, um, well, maybe with the exception of seawater and milk of magnesia, these are all things that you have contact with on a relatively frequent basis, maybe not oven cleaner. I don't actually clean my oven very often. So um, I don't think I even have any in my house. Um, but, but, so these, but these are all relatively routine things, and you have some, you know, you have some sense of you know, uh, lemon juice, and you have some sense of, of water and some of these other things. Um, you'll notice that a lot of the things that are uh, slight acids are actually good to eat, and it's true that a lot of our foods are slightly acidic. Uh, what's more, you actually have a built-in pH meter on your own tongue. So um, the, the sense of sour is actually when, you're, when you taste something and it tastes sour, what's happening is that a receptor in your taste buds is binding hydrogen ions. 
and sending a, a, sending, um, a, nerve, a, a neural signal to your brain that says, ah, that tastes sour. So you actually have your own built-in pH meter right there in your mouth, um, but I don't recommend that you use it in lab. We have our own pH meters that you'll be using instead.